Okay, so uh, we're looking at how to uh, prepare your 3D file for 3D printing with Iger uh, for the Mark II uh, 3D printer. So we start with Tinkercad, and here's our, our bridge. And just a couple quick things. Uh, you can see from my design here uh, that the members are pretty thin. They have to be if, if we're going to keep it under the weight limit and cost limit. Um, they are... 3.39 millimeters tall for some of them and um, I think they're two millimeters wide so, so they're thin they're thin um, some of the other members are like three and a half um, but they're all they're all basically uh, under four millimeters um, and you may you may choose a slightly different design maybe it'll beef up some of the members but but that's what I have right here okay so we're going to make sure that we either have the whole thing selected or none of it selected. We're going to go to export and we want to export as STL. And it's going to save our file and downloads. We can go over to the Iger software, make sure we're in the library. Um, and we can import STL. So there it is, bridge three. The <laughs> 14th time I've, I've iterated this bridge um, and we'll open that and that's going to open it in Iger so here it is um, if it comes in in an orientation that we don't like all we have to do to reorient it is click on the plane that we want it oriented in so boom it's going to move it like that I want it to print flat like this it's going to make the most sense uh, from a 3d printing standpoint uh, so either on that face or on that face. Um, and the main thing, the main reason is because I want composite built into uh, each side, each truss uh, individually. Uh, you'll see that in just a second. Um, things may look a little bit different when you first uh, bring yours in, uh, depending on what you have uh, set up here. And you want to make sure that... Um, you are printing sometimes it defaults to one of these other materials you want you're printing an onyx that's nylon and the reinforcement material we're going to select is carbon fiber the printer if it doesn't have it defaulted is a desktop onyx mark ii okay now uh you can modify most of, most of these later on but it's, it's best that we can get kind of close right now so material settings we're going to click on that we can change um the the density of the fill so you can make uh, the inside not quite solid or you can make it more solid if you want to make it fully solid you have to click on fully solid or if you pick like rectangular you can go all the way up to 92 percent all the way down to zero and and it really doesn't matter which one of those you pick but the infill density uh, definitely does have a bearing on, on the overall strength but you remember i I think I tried to, when I printed this one, I tried to print it at full solid, but it makes it heavier too. Um, roof and floor layers. So you're printing this thing layer by layer, and um, basically, and, and you can click on these, it'll give you maybe a better explanation. But how many layers of plastic are laid down um, on the top and bottom of, of each part before it starts doing that? that infill density assuming that you're you're not printing solid um, for mine I picked like one or two because I wanted to maximize the number of layers of composite that I could put in and you do that by putting in less of the um, actual onyx material and the same thing on wall layers um, I bumped that down to one they recommend four and two um, and I don't know if I'm going to end up regretting that for my design. But uh, the fewer wall layers you have, the more composite you can fit in. The yeah, And, and I'm sure there's a trade-off, too. It, it may end up backfiring on me. Um, so I'll, I'll do that for now, and, and you can choose your own way if you want. How many layers of fiber do you want? I'm just going to bump this up, <clears throat> and it'll max out. It probably won't. It's definitely not going to be able to put in 74 layers of fiber, but you can you can tweak that later on. You can change how the fiber is going to be put in. I like, for bridges, I like the idea of concentric fiber. 
um, which is what this picture is. That's isotrop isotropic, sorry, isotropic fiber versus concentric. Um, one, two. I'm just going to pick one layer or one one ring, and we'll click on save. So it's going to take a second. Now it's going to save all that information, and and you're just going to have to kind of play around with this to get a feel. Um, Iger is a cloud-based software, so you should be able to access this from any computer. Um, as it's it's going through this uh, slicing process, basically figuring out layer by layer how it's going to print out, it's going to tell you all your different specs over here. So this says, my mass and my final part is 15 grams, cost is just about $15. I'm bumping up your yours, uh, originally you said 15 and 15 were the max. Uh, I'm bumping them up to 18 and 18, so, so I can even make this better. Um, so what I could do, if I wanted to, I could bump up the fill density to like 100%. It's going to add a little mass, it's going to make me stronger. Um, I could maybe go back to Tinkercad and thicken up some of the, of the um, members. But I'm just going to move forward so you can see this. So once we've saved it, and it's Done all these calculations, we can go to internal view, and this is where we can kind of see exactly how things are getting built up. So, this is my internal view. Anything that's in blue, that's actual fiber material. Um, so, that's carbon fiber versus the actual sort of grayish is uh, the onyx, the nylon, and you can see all the same specs over here. Um, I like to look at this in 2D view makes it a little easier and I can I can scroll through all the layers all the layers are down here so layer by layer you can see how this thing is printing up um, in this layer here I'm just printing some of the cross the X cross members and then some support for the top to fit on and eventually I get up to the top these sections in here the blue that's uh, that's fiber so if I zoom in here, I can see exactly how the blue fiber, it's not blue in real life, but how the fiber is going to be laid down. Um, so I'm going to have two layers of fiber in this member, which is actually good because that member is in compression. Um, and then every other member is going to have one, it looks like, except those X's, those X uh, braces, they're not going to have any because they're printed up at an angle. And it's just not going to work to put fiber in them. Um, but there we go. If we're happy with that, that's great. If not, you can tweak some things over here. You can change it to isotropic fiber and see what happens. And actually, in this case, it looks more or less the same um, because this isn't thick enough to do much with isotropic fiber. If I wanted to go back to concentric and bump this up to two, probably going to say there's really not enough room to do two in some of these members so it can do two rings around the whole thing but then it's not able to fit any in here because that would require another layer like in the top and there's just not enough space for it so I'd actually prefer that we have fiber in these and again I don't know if that's the right answer or not but, um, but there we go that's basically it so it, it's probably going to require you to do a few iterations, a few different tries before you set on something that you like. Um, and once you're ready, you can uh, you can click on the print button and you can export the build. Let's see if I do that, I think. Okay, so mine is set up to uh, to add itself directly to the the queue and the 3D printer is set up on the on the Wi-Fi, so I'm going to cancel that. If you're not set up on the Wi-Fi, it's probably just going to save a file. But regardless, for now, um, if you can get me that file by I think we're saying Monday at 9 a.m., that's what we're looking for. Um, I want to go back to Tinkercad and just point out that. You do in your in your file. You probably want to make sure that you don't have any of these like sticking out. Like, don't be sloppy. Don't make members stick out like that. Um, and 
make sure that everything is in the same plane. So like this top number here, it's basically a, a carbon copy of the bottom uh, truss. It should all be in the same plane. You shouldn't have some parts that are sticking up higher than others, uh, if that makes sense. Just for both for strength and for printing reasons. Um, and that's it. If you have any questions, send me an email. Uh, hopefully it makes sense. And uh, good luck.